Hello. Morning. I'm Chloe. I'm Chris. We've been here Hello, before. Chris. Uh, right, these instructions don't seem to match what I'm what I'm seeing here. Okay. Uh, so I'm just checking, sharing my screen, and making sure I can. So that's all right. Can I already have my presentation set up in present mode when I share it, or do I have to click on that? Will, will that not work? Uh, I don't know. Actually. So that's the screen, and then I just need to click on present. I think you might have to. Um, uh, I'll, just, I'll try it and see if I can have it on present mode first. No, because I can't do that then. I can't see myself. Sorry. How long do you want each um, presentation to last, Chris? Uh, I think we normally do about, um, so this one goes on for, is this an hour? I've got, yeah. Uh, so um, we normally like to do, uh, so I'll be, I'll be about five minutes. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's only you and Trevor. So uh, Trevor will be about 10, uh, ten minutes and okay. then, going to be um and then so you can be sort of 15 minutes or so okay uh, uh, how long were you thinking uh well i can do anything between 10 15 20 you know whatever it takes i'm, I'm not i've not, not timed it but normally that's kind of how long these things done i've not done the french one before i've done the spanish one of the one of these but i haven't done the french oh, that's one. interesting oh, okay um uh, do you have any questions that you'd like me to ask that aren't covered uh, and you'd like me to? I don't think so. I mean, I was I've put at the end about questions, but I'm sort of going to I didn't know whether you wanted to take questions at this point um, or do you want to refer them to people at the booth? So we definitely want. Well, we've got an hour to fill, so I think we're going to need the. Um, Perfect. OK, so I think we will. Uh, yeah. Um, That's fine. I'm a bit worried about these controls that don't seem to be quite right. Uh, so, um. Okay, so this one goes on to 10 past. So uh, you should get a notification when it says you're in practice mode. It would say you're in. Shall I, shall I, I'll, I'll come out and leave you in peace. Okay, and come sure. back.
Hi, you sorted. Very good. I think we may have started early, but <laughs> never mind. If people can hear us, we, we're just uh, we'll be starting the actual uh, webinar in uh, about four minutes. Okie dokie. Did you hear that pling? Hello, Chloe. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thanks. Trevor, how are you? Yes, not much bad, thank you. Not too bad. Bright, bright, breezy where I am. How about yourself? Uh, well, it's breezy. It's not quite too early here, so that's good. We're because uh, I'm in France, so we're an hour ahead of you guys. But um, um, yeah. So, yeah. I, um, I've actually been going back through some of the decks this morning, and um, yeah, I was, I was looking at my, I was looking at my lounge, thinking, okay, well, I'll put a little background on to. Uh, <laughs> to yeah, hide. I know. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm just going to mute myself because I think we've got um, got people on board already. So we're just waiting for the um, for Chris to do his biz. Yes, the, the, uh, there's meant to be a button that said uh, start, but I think I, I may have already pressed it. So welcome if you <laughs> if you've joined us three minutes early. Uh, we will be uh, we'll be kicking off in, in a few minutes. Um, yes. I'm on a very busy bus route, so I'll apologise in advance if the if the uh, if the number twenty eight to Tunbridge Wells uh, interrupts us every every ten minutes. What will actually happen, of course, is I'll mute myself and then every time forget to unmute myself. So apologies for that as well. Okay, everyone. Well, it's uh, it's ten past. It's ten past nine. So uh, let's uh, let's start. It's ten past nine here in the UK, anyway. But I appreciate that um, we get people coming from uh, all over the world. So whatever time zone you're on, I know we get we get people tuning in from New Zealand and coming in from 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 the states. So uh, whatever time zone uh, you're on, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, uh, and welcome to uh, our second uh, your overseas home virtual event. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm the editor of Property Guides. Uh, I've had, I've been in, in the overseas, overseas property business for coming up to 15 years now, starting off showing people properties abroad for a place in the sun and then moving on to onto Property Guides about five years, uh, five years ago. 
as a business, we've been helping customers to buy abroad safely for well over 10 years now. We provide all the guides and the newsletters and the, uh, all, the, all the resources that you need to, to buy safely, but also to uh, connect you uh, with the trusted experts and to support you with every step of your purchase. Because you realize that it's one of those big things in life, uh, buying, a prop, uh, buying a property abroad along with you know, starting your first job, having a child, buying your first home, I would put buying a property abroad in one of those life-changing, life-enhancing um, category. It's great to have so many of you here. Uh, obviously, we're sorry we can't meet you all in, per in person just yet, but according to my times, everybody in Britain and Europe is going to be vaccinated, if that's, if that's what you want, by the summer, by, the, uh, by high summer. So hopefully we'll be seeing you again in the autumn and hopefully we'll see you in France before then. Um, uh, for this session, I'm joined by two buying experts who are here to share their, their knowledge and advice on buying in, in France. It continues to be the most uh, one of the most popular countries for our customers. It's sort of a fight between France and Spain, but I would say um, uh, people buying in France are more active uh, and um, you seem to be getting on with it. Uh, they will take you through uh, through, through their present presentations, and then we'll have plenty of time for, for a Q&A. And then I hope you'll head over to their booths to, to, to chat with them in, uh, in person. It's a, it's a really clever system, this, which uh, it had, recreates, you know, just about everything that you can do on a normal exhibition, uh, but you can do it all from home without putting your trousers on, if you so, so desire. Uh, so firstly, we're going to hear from uh, uh, Trevor Charnley, who is from Smart Currency Exchange. Trevor heads up the, uh, the, client, the private client division at Smart. He's got long experience in uh, foreign exchange. Uh, the Smart Currency team are based here in the UK and they're really well placed to help with your, with your property purchase. Then after that, we'll have Chloe Williams from Beau Village. As a business, um, we've worked with Chloe and her team for, for years and they and we have helped hundreds of people just like you to buy in France. She has personal experience in moving to France herself with her, with her fa family, and she's ideally placed to share her experience and uh, expertise and support you. So to start with, each of the speakers will provide you with a brief insight into the market uh, and the services they can offer. And then, as I say, at the end of the presentation, you'll have plenty of time to, to chat with them. Uh, and, um, and they'll all be available in the exhibition hall afterwards. So, Enough for me, let's get on with the presentation. So I'm gonna hand over to, to uh, Trevor. Thank you, Chris. Just give me one second. I'm just going to uh, share my screen. Hopefully all, all technology works as it should. Okay, perfect. Um, so thanks for the introduction, Chris. So um, as Chris says, uh, my name is Trevor Charney. I'm the Managing Director here at Smart Currency um for our private customer offering uh my background i've been in foreign exchange and international payments uh since 2010 uh so within my world i have helped tens of thousands of of customers uh reach their dream and, and purchase an overseas property uh, and effectively help them through the the buying journey when it comes to um currency related matters which of course can be a a real real minefield so i'm going to take you through um, it's the real basics of what to consider when you're um, looking at purchasing an overseas property um, and what you should consider from a currency perspective. So I'm just going to start off with, uh, with, a, with a small fact. So over the last three years, the average movement on sterling euro per year is 10%. So on a property purchase of 250,000 euros, that's a difference of 25,000 euros. So just keep that in mind. And we'll come back to that very shortly. So smart currency, who, who are we? So we are a foreign exchange and international payment specialist. Uh, we help a multitude of different customers. So we have a, a large private customer division, which helps customers just like yourself um, making overseas asset purchases, whether that be property, luxury goods, luxury items, all the way down to customers that are making small remittance payments. And that could be um, money sent to friends and family uh, that could be 
invoices for whatever it may be. That could be maintenance fees or um, building costs, insurance costs, etc. So we help private customers do a whole host of, uh, of transactions internationally. We also have a corporate side of our business too. Uh, they help predominantly UK-based SMEs who are trading internationally. And they could be importers and exporters, uh, all the way up to, to large travel companies, airlines, etc. And they help them with their hedging requirements. So as a business, we've got a relatively diverse mix of customers that we deal with. But property is definitely a huge, huge specialism for us. Uh, we were founded in 2004. Uh, and since over that time, we've grown from being a, a very, very small outfit to now a, a business which uh, turns over multi-billions per year. Um, and as we are right now, we've transferred over 10 billion uh, in foreign currency uh, since 2004, which is uh, by no means a small feat. Um, we have helped over 10,000 clients buy their overseas dream property. Uh, we provide specifically a lot of help and guidance through that process. Uh, as I mentioned right at the start, uh, the foreign currency market can be uh, complicated um, if, you so, if you so wish it to be, but equally, uh, we help take some of that pain away and try and make it as simple as possible so that you can focus on your core outcome, which is getting that property completed and making your move out to France. In terms of how our customers rate us, so we are constantly in seeking, uh, we are constantly seeking uh, recommendation and testimonials, etc. On Trustpilot, we are ranked excellent. Uh, we have a couple of thousand reviews on there, which you're obviously free to go and have a look at and and, and read over some of our customer thoughts. Um, but as we are right now, we are ranked excellent on Trustpilot in terms of our service. So some key things about. Um, purchasing an overseas property and some of the things that you really really must be um must be conscientious of which is going to help you uh, get through that journey in as smooth uh as smooth a manner as possible so first thing know your sterling budget so when you're looking at properties in france everything will be listed in euros understand your sterling budget that's the key i'll talk about i'll talk a little bit more about why shortly but your sterling budget is the absolute key. That is your home denominated currency in theory, if you are a Brit looking to buy in France, clearly if you're based in other areas of the world, um, do exactly the same thing, but understand your domestic budget. That's the most important thing. What is your overall spend that you'd like to achieve in your home currency? You need to understand the importance of currency fluctuations. So I mentioned again, right at the start, some of those averages over the last three years, and I'll go into a little bit more detail shortly, but currency fluctuations can make a huge, huge difference in terms of your affordability. So once you've understood what your domestic budget is, what your sterling budget is, or what your dollar budget is, for example, if you're based in the US, that's then going to help you understand what your euro budget is going to be for your, um, uh, for your property purchase. The importance then of those currency fluctuations is to understand that variance. The foreign exchange market is one of the most liquid markets on the planet. Uh, currency rates move every second of every single day, whereas your property purchase could very well take weeks, months, and at which point, by the time you've gone to seek your initial, uh, sorry, gone to seek your dream property, and by the time you actually complete on that property, there is a good chance that the exchange rates will have moved relatively significantly over that period of time. So it's really important that you understand your domestic budget, the effect that currency rates could have on your budgeting euros for France, and therefore make sure that you are looking for properties that fit within those parameters. And that's where people like Chloe at BVI, that's where people like ourselves at Smart Currency will be able to help you, give you those indicators as to what you should be factoring in in terms of those prospective currency movements. Um, because clearly, if you've got a domestic budget and then you max out your euro budget and the currency rates move between now and when you actually complete on that property, potentially you could end up with a shortfall um, in terms of your affordability. So really important that you understand the importance of those currency fluctuations. Manage your foreign exchange risk effectively. Again, I'll, we'll, we'll go into that slightly in the, in, the, in the next slide in a little bit more detail uh, because there are multiple tools that you can utilize which will help you remove some of that foreign exchange risk. 
forward contract we'll go into again in, in more detail on the next slide but that is the primary tool that you can utilize as an overseas buyer to completely remove um, the risk of foreign exchange rate movements it is a tool that allows you to agree an exchange rate today for delivery in the future and i'll take you through that in a touch more detail next uh, pre-fund your client account again that's one of the um, uh, a good tool to, to utilize to make sure that um, your payments are, are done uh, effectively and on time of course when it comes to property you want your money in situ um, at the exact time and moment that's required by your solicitor and vendor. So just talking about staying, extra, uh, staying your exchange rates, so I'll take you right back to the, one of the first things that I said around those fluctuations. So the last three years, the average yearly movement on sterling euro has been 10%. So as I say, on, a, on an asset purchase of 250,000 euros, that's 25,000 euro difference. And if we look at the last 12 months, um, although it's been a very, very odd space of time, I wanted to give you that three year average to give you that feel that actually, although we've experienced an extremely uh, bizarre 12 months, uh, that kind of movement of 10 percent is not uh, not unusual. That is a, a that has been the, the typical movement over the last three years, so although it's in a lot of volatility uh, over the last 12 months with regards to COVID. Um, that movement of 10 percent actually is well within the bounds of what we would typically look to expect. And that's one of the most important things you need to understand when, when looking at uh, purchasing an overseas property is that potential for exchange rates to move between the point that you're looking and shopping around, <clears throat> agreeing that initial um, purchase price and the point that you need to complete and actually make those currency transactions. There's a huge prospect to, um, uh, for those exchange rates to move against you. And at which point that's why it's important to consider the tools that are available from a currency perspective to hedge against that risk. And I'll take you through that in a second. Currency forecasts are unreliable. So it's the, the, the reality is currency, as I mentioned, is, is one of the or is the most liquid market on the planet. You can look at all the forecasts you want from any banks, and there is a huge, huge variance in terms of um, what. Uh, eco economists and, uh, and banking forecasters will predict in terms of currency rate movements. It can be huge, huge, huge variance. We look at them every morning um, in terms of the uh, bank projections and, and you can often get variances of 15, 20, 30 percent between the top rated bank and the lowest rated bank, and at which point um, it's very, very, very difficult to forecast. And ultimately, if you could forecast it, um, I probably wouldn't be speaking to you here today. I probably would be sat on the beach somewhere in, uh, in, in the uh, Caribbean. And I suspect most economists and, uh, and currency forecasters would be as well. The important thing from your perspective is to minimise that risk, is to utilise tools such as a forward contract to remove that risk from your purchase completely. So the way a forward contract works, is it allows you, as I described, to agree an exchange rate today for delivery in the future. So in its most simple terms, if you were to find a property in France today for €250,000, you know what that's going to cost you today in sterling based on today's exchange rate. Utilising a forward contract, you could agree today's exchange rate irrespective of what happens over the next month, two months, three months, your exchange rate is fixed. That way you know that your property purchase of 250,000 euros is going to cost you, for example, 200,000 pounds, irrespective of where that currency rate is in a month, in two months, in three months time. That way you remove the foreign exchange risk from your property purchase completely. And when you come to complete in three months time, you know exactly the sterling value that you need to transfer in order to achieve that amount of euros. So you remove that risk completely. It's one of the best tools available for somebody that is making an overseas asset purchase um, with some kind of time frame, with a month, two months, three months, whatever that number may be. Um, it completely removes that risk. It means that you have absolute certainty and security of how much that overseas property is going to cost you instead. Uh, how does smart currency stand out from its competitors? Um, so we are, as a business, extremely safe and secure. Um, we, as I say, we've been around since 2004 and make literally thousands 
of money transfers each and every week. Um, all client monies are held in client segregated accounts. So as a, we are, our industry uh, is, we are not a, a bank, therefore we are not uh, subject to the financial services compensation scheme. Our, the equivalent in our industry is to utilize segregated client accounts. So it's very similar to how you would deal with uh, a law firm, for example. So all your client monies that you hold with us in the process of making an overseas property purchase, we hold in dedicated client segregated accounts. Um, they never form, your monies never form part of Smart Currencies balance sheet. They are dedicated accounts held with top tier UK banks, predominantly with us, uh, with Barclays and, uh, and AIB. Oh, sorry, BOI, rather, Bank of Ireland. Um, as a business, we are privately owned uh, and we hold uh, large cash reserves within our business. We are uh, very, very stable in terms of how we like to run uh, our company. Um, your service that you will receive. So we are not a, a pure online provider, uh, although we do have online services that we, uh, we provide to our customers. But we truly believe in that in dedicated personal account management. So each and every one of our customers has a personal uh, account manager who will help them through their transaction end to end. That person will have conducted thousands of uh, transactions prior. Um, again, helping so many customers do exactly what you're looking to do in terms of that foreign currency transaction. We stand for customer service, not commission. So as you'll see from our Trustpilot ratings, please do take the time to have a look over them. Um, our, we are all about client service. And it's not necessarily just down to uh, the proactive pieces that we do. It's also when um, when things are tricky or when things get a little bit stressful, uh, that overseas property purchase can throw up a few uh, uh, a few challenges along the way. Um, and ultimately, because we have a dedicated team who have been through so many of these transactions in the past, we will help take you through that journey. Um, a couple of our trust pilot reviews. I'll just leave these on the screen for a few seconds, but. Um, the vast majority of our trust pilot reviews are focused on the quality of support and guidance that we provide, the expert service, and the ability to, to utilize tools such as a forward contract to completely remove that risk. It, we often find with our customers, it's so, so important to them to know exactly how much money that overseas property purchase is going to, to cost them, and at which point it becomes such an important part of a, of a customer's journey. Other areas that we can assist with, so um, either along the journey prior to or afterwards, there's lots of other reasons that we uh, transfer money for our customers. So regular payment plans are a really, really good tool. Again, um, if you're receiving perhaps uh, a regular payment, it could be a, a pension from the UK, for example, which you're looking to transfer over to France once you've uh, once you've made that that move. We can help you do that and automate that so that you don't have to worry about making those individual transactions on a monthly basis. Um, basic bills and maintenance. Uh, if you're looking to make a major pension transfer, again, that's something that we can assist with. We also have a very extensive partner network that, uh, that can assist with some of these uh, financial matters too, if, uh, if that was needed. So again, not just it's not just the currency service that we provide. Uh, our network is, is often very, very important to our customers too. Simple online transfers, either on the online system or on the app. Um, and we'll also help you move those living costs and renovation costs as well. And that's, uh, that's everything in relation to smart currency. And, and as Chris mentioned right at the start, uh, we'll be around for, for the Q&A very shortly. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Trevor. Now, uh, we have had a few questions uh, come in. Uh, I know a lot of people are desperate to hear, hear about France, and we will get to France. But of course, when you're sending your life savings to another country in different currency, different legal system, uh, you want to know that everything is going to be safe and secure. So we have had had a few questions, which I'm just going to briefly put to uh, put to, put to Trevor before we move on to uh, France. One from from Simon here: Can you back out of a booked forward contract purchase if the property purchase falls through or things change? And what and what's hap uh, what happens if you if you have to do that? Sure. So once you've booked a forward contract, that is that is that exchange rate agreed at that time. So it isn't something that. Um, uh, we can simply cancel, if you see what I mean. If, when you get to a scenario that, um, that, for example, that property purchase falls through, there's multiple things that you can do. So 
you can reverse the fraud contract so we can sell it back into the market, at which point we would do that at whatever the prevailing exchange rate is. So uh, we, can, we can get you out of that fraud contract. Sometimes that will be a positive because if the exchange rate has moved positively, then, then there could be a gain there. If the exchange rate has moved negatively, then there may be a loss there. So you'd be subject to that loss. Having said that, we are very, very flexible. So for example, if your property purchase falls through and you're still in the process of trying to find another property, for example, and actually it's not necessarily that you've uh, given up completely. Perhaps your plans have just been extended by a month or two months or three months because you've got to find that new property. Then we can do what's called a, a roll. So we can move the, the end date of that full contract and we can move it forward to try and accommodate that new property, uh, that new property that you're looking for. So we will try and be as flexible as we possibly can. Um, hopefully that comes up. Great. Okay. Um, the uh, and a full contract lasts a year normally, doesn't doesn't it? It, it typically does. Yes. However, you can do it up to two years. Um, so the main reason that um, the main reason that most of our customers would would only be looking to do it up to a year is because. Or simply put, if you if you're buying a a property that is already standing and already exists, um, then it, it typically wouldn't take more than a year. Uh, however, you do get, uh, particularly when it comes to new builds, uh, some of those time frames can be far longer. Um, so often people will be putting up deposits for a new build, which may um, only come to fruition in eighteen months, two years, or perhaps beyond. So we do offer full contracts uh, up to two years but most of our customers would only take advantage of that up to 12, just purely based on the type of property that they're buying. Okay, uh, and the other big question we have is, how do you earn your fees? What, what are the fees like for you? What are, what are we gonna pay you for this service? Sure, so we don't charge a specific fee, but we are effectively a currency wholesaler. So as a result of the amount of currency that we buy in the market, we achieve a certain price. So when we go into the market, as, as ourselves, we go and buy euros at a particular price. When we then come to sell those euros to you, we charge a margin. So we're not giving you the wholesale rate of exchange, we're giving you a rate of exchange with our fees included, if you will. So we are effectively a wholesaler. Great, okay. Now I've got lots of other questions, but I know that we want to get on to France. So please, everybody else, please, Take your questions over to Trevor, where, where Trevor and his team will, will be on the, uh, the booth. Uh, but just to finish off, I guess the, the, the thing to say about currencies is, is that you're getting a lot more money than you were, you know, uh, recently. You know, the pound's really riding high. It's at its highest level for, for, for a year. So this really is a good time to be, A, buying in France and B, locking in that rate if you, if you can do. Yeah, but certainly, the, certainly the last uh, the last month or so, um, a huge volume of customers securing their exchange rates um, as a, as a comparable to where we were at this point last year, um, a huge huge gain for them. So, a lot of customers are securing those, agreeing those exchange rates as we are right now. And that seems to be a lot of that is seems to be based on uh, our uh, the UK being ahead of the curve on the vaccine. But it's, but as soon as we lose that that relative advantage, I guess the, there's every danger that the pound will, will start to sink again. Absolutely. There's a, there's a huge swathe of positivity in the UK because of the vaccine rollout. And as a result, you've got a lot of money both flying into the UK. So you, you've obviously seen the um, stocks and share prices on, on the main FTSE indexes increasing quite significantly because of such a, a swathe of positivity about the UK in terms of that vaccine rollout. But yes, you're right. As, as we get to a, uh, a perhaps more uh, even playing field when, uh, when Europe uh, and the rest of the world start to improve their own vaccine programs, then that relative advantage may very well slip slip away. Great. Okay. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Trevor. We will now hear from from Chloe from Beauvillage. Uh, so, if um, Trevor, you want to end your slideshow, great. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the uh, your overseas home. Um, I'm going to share. Uh, my screen now so just two seconds and put on the the slide present uh, so my name is Chloe Williams and I'm head of sales at Beauvillage Immobilier um, and as Chris said right at the beginning um, 
20 years ago, I was sitting where you're sitting now, um, looking to move from the UK um, to live in France, um, moving over with my children who were educated in France. Um, and uh, my first experience of uh, looking to buy a property in France was exactly the same. It was at a property show. So um, I've been been along that, that road. Um, since moving to France, I've worked with Beau Village Immobilier for 10 years uh, working in international real estate um, and I spent some of that time working for the company in Spain as well so I've got a, had a foot in both camps um, of the French and the Spanish market uh, but I'm currently the head of sales for Beau Village um, and I live in southwest France. Um, today the uh, what we're going to talk to you about is um, buying a property in France um, and the topics that we're going to cover uh, include looking at the area, choosing your area, uh, finding an agent to work with, hopefully Beau Village, um, searching for the right property for you and your family or yourself and your needs, uh, planning your trip, the documents that you're going to need, uh, making an offer on a property, um, a brief overview of the buying process, um, and just a couple of words about living and working in France. Um, so we'll, I'll go through all of these, but I'm here obviously to take questions afterwards and myself and a number of my colleagues are going to be in the booth, the Beau Village booth, uh, so we can talk to you there as well um, if you wanted to, to ask specific questions. And so looking at buying a property in France, um, the first thing that you, you really need to do is to choose your area. Um, and it will make your life a lot easier if you are pretty specific about the area that you want to be in. Um, and that's thinking about what your needs are versus what your wants are. Um, and one of the first things we always say is make a list. What, what is it that you actually want to get out of, uh, of a property um, and where you want to be? Things like, does it depend on schools? Are you thinking, well, I'd like to be near the sea or in the mountains? Travel links, will I want, be wanting to travel backwards and forwards um, to another country often? And city or countryside. One of the things I do say to clients sometimes is, try to think positively about what you're going to be doing with your life when you get to France. Um, in that way, it's not just about focusing on the property, but it's about your life afterwards. And sometimes people look for an area which is almost a negative of where they currently are because they're searching for this property dream. Um, but if you're used to being in, near a town where you've got access to lots of shops and restaurants and things like that, Maybe being stuck in the countryside, um, miles away from lots of neighbours because you happen to not like your neighbours where you are now is not such a good idea. You might actually decide you want to be somewhere nearer to um, a thriving town or a nice little village um, that might be important to you. So you do need to take some time to think about it. Um, and that helps you to create a dialogue, which you can then talk to your agent about. Um, and you're, all the agents that work with Beau Village, and we have over 100 agents, and we cover an area about the size of England. So it's a large area that we cover for the whole of Southwest France. Um, our agents have generally been through the experience that you're going through as well. Um, and they chose the area where they're living in. And it's always interesting to find out why did they choose that area. Um, buying a property in France, you need to find someone who you've got confidence in and to work with them. And um, I love my little cat there, sit down, we need to talk, because the, the amount of time that you can spend up front talking to an agent, thinking through the process that you've got for buying a property um, is absolutely critical to, um, to being successful in your property search. Uh, I made a rookie mistake early in my career when I was preparing for a client who was coming out to view for a couple of days and I'd booked lots of viewings. We sat down in the agency beforehand to have a coffee before we started and the client said, and of course I have to have my garden completely fenced because I've got two dogs. 
and I, oh no face palm because I knew that I'd got properties out there which were out in the countryside and uh, would not be not be appropriate for two very dynamic dogs who needed a fence. So all of that information is really, really important for us. And I think one of the differences of buying a property in France than say maybe buying in your home country is um, this isn't a necessarily just a transaction for you. This is actually about a lifestyle and a new way of life. And we need to understand about that before we can really get the properties presented to you, which are the right properties. So all of the work that we can do up front is really important. I mean, if the pandemic has done anything, it's really shown us all how to use technology um, to help you find more out about your home. We're doing lots and lots of video tours. We do um, hangouts. We do WhatsApp video sharing. Um, we're trying at the moment to help our clients who are uh, maybe behind a computer, can't come out to view, to do almost their first viewings before they even come physically over to view. We are selling properties via this technology as well for people who really can't come. So please use the technology to really work out if that is the right property for you. Um, we book online chat times with clients. We sit down, have a cup of coffee um, and get to see each other face to face, get to talk in depth about their lifestyle and what they want to do um, with their property. So please use that technology as well. Uh, buying a property in France is about searching for that right property. <clears throat> Prioritise what you want from a property. Yes, you may want X number of bedrooms. You may want to get a rental income from it. You may want to have holiday cottages. Um, you know, really understand what it is that you want to get from that property. More lists. You're definitely going to be writing lots of lists. Um, again, the video tours, they can help you um, to look around the garden, to see the views, to see how near the neighbours are. Um, the technology is there to help um, in a, a very, very positive way. <clears throat> I think going forward, this is going to have changed the way that we do business with our clients. We will be doing an awful lot more video tours, um, even when people can travel easily, because it, it really is helping clients to be very, very clear about what it is that they want. And during a video tour, we listen. We're listening to you. We're hearing the things that are important to you. Uh, we're seeing the things that really work. And it's a very, very powerful tool. So prepare, buying a property in France, planning your trip, the documents that you'll need, get those ducks in a row. Um, you want to make every viewing trip count by talking to your agent. Um, one of the things that does happen at the moment, certainly, is that some vendors are very nervous about having lots of people uh, coming to, uh, to view the property. So they are asking questions about proof of finance. They will be wanting to know that you've got your finance in place, um, that you've um, talked to um, smart currency exchange. So know your sterling uh, and your euro exchange rate. Again, very important. It's, it's the second question whenever we talk about finance that I'll say to a client when they say, oh, well, my budget is X. And I'll say, have you spoken to smart currency? Do you know what your exchange rate is? Um, it's an absolutely critical part of the whole process when you're coming to, to buy a property. Um, but what if you're not a cash buyer? Lots of people need finance. You may require a mortgage to buy or as a top up. Um, or you may need to sell a property before you, you buy. Um, we can help you with a property with mortgage referrals. We can put you in touch with um, local banks. We use BNP Paribas a lot for our clients here, um, or a um, uh, uh, courtier, uh, that's the French word, a broker for, um, for finding, uh, finding a property. Um, and if you need to sell a property before you buy, um, we can still help you we can still view properties with you um, but it's obviously you're not going to be in such a strong position when it comes to making an offer for a property because you haven't got the uh, liquid cash available to buy um, when we talk about the property buying process um, we'll I'll talk a little bit more about that um, so you found the property we've done our homework we've done our job rights and we found your property that you want 
and you're um, going to be considering making an offer on the property. Um, are there any additional costs? Well, there's no cost to making a, um, uh, an offer, but you need to know that about the legal costs, the notaire costs, um, which are an additional budget around about 8% for notaire's fees. Um, so that if you want renovation costs, if you want to do things to the property, just be aware of what your budget is going to be so that you are absolutely clear what your um, offer is going to be based on. Um, understand the situation before your offering. So we will talk to you about the vendor situation, which we will know. Um, we can talk to you about what's happening in the marketplace. Uh, we have a, um, a very good relationship and understanding of the areas that we work in. Um, in which case we'll also talk to you about the market price. Um, is that if we think there is more room for an offer, um, if we think someone's very keen to sell, um, we, can, we can give you very good advice about that. Um, so that's where we think our agents will really be able to help you um, in understanding where you go regarding an offer. Um, let's just take a few minutes just to look through the, pro the process for buying a property in France. Um, we're going to have a quick look at what the legal involvement is. Um, however, you can contact um, us via marketing at bourvillage.com and we'll happily send you a, a leaflet which outlines the, the process for this in depth. Um, all, this document is actually available on our booth. So when you have finished here, please come and see us on the booth and you'll see it as a document that you can download and take away with you today. Um, looking at the legal uh, process, the stages that we go through, um, the first thing that we will do once, once you've decided on the offer that you want to make for the property is that um, we will prepare a letter of intention to purchase. It's a pre-contact letter, pre-contract letter, uh, which simply sets out who you are, who the vendor is, the details about the property, and what the amount of that offer is, including agency fees. Um, it, it, we then ask you to sign it and we ask the vendor to sign it. Um, and basically that gives us about a month when the property is no longer on market and it gives you time to um, start the process with your uh, notaire, the notary, who will be managing the conveyancing for you. The notary public um, is the person who is the equivalent of a lawyer, a local lawyer in an area. However, they aren't a solicitor in the way that you would understand if you're buying from the UK. They are more of a, a government, um, um, I can't say employee, but they work on behalf of the government, the French government, to make sure that the, the process of purchasing the property is done in accordance with French legal requirements. Um, they quite often, the same notaire will look after both parties. So their interest is in making sure that the, the property that is being sold is being sold legally, that the person who is selling it is entitled to sell it, that um, all the um, standards of the property are, are met in terms of their compliance with French law. If you have a swimming pool on the property, has that swimming pool got proper planning permission? Does it have a pool alarm in it? Um, is the property, if any renovations have been made, have they been made legally? Are they registered with the um, local town hall? All of those kind of things are the responsibility of the notaire. One of the things I learned for in France in comparison with say buying a property in Spain is that in uh, Spain when you buy a property it's considered a private contract between two parties. In France it's considered part of the consumer code. So all the way through the purchase the, um, the weight of uh, power if you like is with the buyer. The buyer is very very well protected under French legal uh, law and you get things like cooling off periods so once an initial contract the compromis de vente the promise to buy is signed which is the initial as the initial contract you get a 10-day cooling off period 
So it is not that you needn't worry about having, you know, high pressure selling, sign on the dotted line on the day when you've had a few too many glasses of wine and you're going to end up having bought a property. That's not how it works. You will have um, due, there's due diligence which is carried out and you'll have a time to reflect on the buying of the property. In that way, uh, France is very, very low in terms of um, conveyancing litigation or sort of problems after a purchase because you get a lot of time in the whole process um, to make sure you're happy with what you're doing. This is the period of reflection um, and it takes 10 working days. You're notified when the period of reflection starts and you're notified when it's going to end so that you've got time to pull out if you decide it's not the right thing for you. Um, again, if you contact us at marketing at Beau Village or look on our site, um, we'll, we'll give you some more information about the legal process. So once the compromis has been signed and the uh, period of reflection is over, then the notaire starts the legal conveyancing. They go and get all of the documentation from the local mairie. They will check on all the planning permissions. Um, and once all of that has been prepared, then you have the act de vente, which is basically what we would know as completion. Um, one of the things I forgot to mention is that at the compromise stage, you will pay a deposit, normally 10%. And that is held by the um, notaire, it's held in a government escrow account. Um, and again, you'd work with smart currency. They, they are very well used to doing this um, to transfer funds over into um, government accounts. Um, so, yeah, just more information about our legal process is PDF. Um, how long does the legal process take? Mm, now, from the, that, the good side of the legal process is that um, you're very well protected. There's lots of stages in it, uh, there's lots of paperwork in it, and anyone buying in France needs to be prepared for the fact there's going to be lots of paperwork, um, but it can take quite a long time. Um, it can take four to five months. Um, to get all of that um, pro paperwork and to get the process done. Um, but you are assured then that it's done properly and that you have all the information that you need. Um, so it's definitely something that you need to take into account. Um, and for a lot of clients who are buying in the run up to Brexit, it was really important that we'd got everything sorted out by September in order to have a completion which was taking place in December. Um, so it can be done in three months or so, but we generally like to say four, just to give us a bit of extra time. Um, so that's it. You've got your property, you've got your keys. Um, Beau Village, the relationship with us generally doesn't stop once you've bought a property. Um, we are keeping, we're famously famous for keeping in touch with our clients um, if they have questions afterwards or um, I've had clients come back to me saying, I need to see a physiotherapist. Can you recommend somebody? So all of those kind of things is, um, is important to us as well, because we know just what it's like when you're buying a property in France and you're first moving in. I've gone to see schools with clients. Um, you know, we, we do try and go that extra mile because it is about service at the end of the day. Um, so living and working in France, I'm going to suggest that um, we need to we need to find out a bit more about what your situation is, because there's a lot of speculation about healthcare and pensions for those leaving the UK to live in France. Um, we've actually set out a, a very useful document with lots of information about the withdrawal agreement. And again, we can send you a copy of this um, and our legal guide. Just let us know and we'll, we'll talk to you about that in more detail. So that's me done. Okay, fantastic. Thanks so much, Chloe. Overview. So, fantastic. Thanks so much, Chloe. Uh, and if you'd like to be sitting in Chloe's seat in in twenty years' time or 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 less, uh, I know that Beauvalage are always keen to speak to new British people moving out there with a view to if they'd like to get involved in the business too. That's true. Yeah. So, okay. Now we've had lots of questions coming in. Uh, I can see I can see Trevor's typing away though, answering questions on the currency. So I'm going to launch straight back into some questions uh, on uh, for Chloe. Yep. Okay. The first one is about what's happening with prices at the moment. I've been amazed in my uh, role looking at, at, at lots of different countries to see that the the pandemic has se has seen most prices rising, just like, uh, like, they have, like they have the UK, which I have to say I wasn't I was surprised about. 
what's happening yeah. in France though? Um, the prices are definitely not falling, that is for sure. Um, we have, I've never in the last year seen, sold so many properties at asking price. Um, it's been absolutely incredible and we are seeing an awful lot of um, Europeans who have been able to travel um, as well as Brits buying properties because they want to be, they want to have more property for their money, uh, which France, particularly rural France on the outskirts of towns and um, cities offers people um, because they want to have move out of apartments and into houses. Um, we find we are, have got a shortage of property, I would say, at the moment, um, particularly if you're within, uh, say, half an hour or so of um, a city. I, I live in the border of the Charente and the Dordogne, um, and Angoulême, which is a city about uh, 25, 30 minutes away from me, um, it is absolutely booming um, because we are an hour and a half from Paris on the fast train from Angoulême um, and an awful lot of people in the northern parts of France are moving south um, and they want to have properties with large gardens, rooms for home offices. Um, I spoke to a client the other day who was moving from London um, and wants to buy in France. He'll commute backwards and forwards um, but will use home working as a, as a new way of, of doing business. Had some clients moving from Belgium um, who I spoke to. Again, the same thing. They um, are coming from a, a country with high costs of real estate and for the price of um, a large apartment in Brussels, they can buy a very large property with garden and land and cottages down in France. So France represents fantastic value for money um, in rural France. Um, the new train line, which was uh, built between Paris and Bordeaux, which took an hour off the travel time from Paris to Bordeaux, it was three hours, it's now two, has um, had a boom of property sales in the, in the southwest of France. Um, so no, we're not seeing prices going down much at all. Okay, a, uh, uh, a couple of questions on virtual viewings. The first yep. one is, uh, uh, surveyor presumably you can get a local a local chap or lady to come out and get the place checked over for you Absolutely. How, how do surveys work in in France okay. uh, well there's there's several options that we can do um, there is an expert immobilier who is a, a French qualified surveyor and uh, we we just we, we can employ him or her absolutely to um, to come and visit the property and give you a full a full structural survey, that's absolutely fine. Um, we had a, an incident recently where a client had a, just a concern about a particular roof. So we got a, uh, a qualified and certified roof engineer to come and do just a survey on a roof, which is a little bit cheaper. Um, so it depends on, on what the situation is. Um, we find sometimes what's useful is that if people have got friends who live in the area, uh, they come along and do a physical viewing um, as well. So we can, if you can't travel, uh, you could do a virtual viewing and then get somebody you know to come and view. But absolutely, we can, we can, we do that all the time. So we're happy to do that for for clients. Okay. Uh, on a similar subject, someone who hasn't left their name says, uh, "Not trying to be a snob, but when you buy a house in the UK, you can look at the local town and see if it's run down or not. How would you find that out in France?" How, how can you check out the local area? Yeah, well, you, you talk to us, frankly, um, and uh, and we will tell you very honestly um, what the what the area is like. Um, I mean, you can look at property, you can look at towns, you can drive through them on Google Zoom, you, you know, on Google Maps and things like that. So you can see, you know, are all the shops shut? Is it is it somewhere that's not thriving? Um, but we, as I say, we live in the areas, our agents live in the areas. Um, we pride ourselves on being honest about areas. We don't want to have told you, oh, it's a dynamic village full of shops for you then to arrive and say, well, no, it isn't, because that's it's not going to reflect well on us um, and you need to trust us. Um, it's uh, it's important to us that we tell you the honest truth about, about towns. Um, and 
you know, you're, you're not likely in a small French town to find, you know, ethnic restaurants maybe and things like that. It's pretty traditional. Um, if you wanted to be near a city um, to have a bit more dynamic life going on, then we'll, we'll advise you on that as well. But we're, we're more than happy to be as honest as we possibly can um, about it. That keeps clients coming back to us and it keeps the relationship going with us. I'll mute myself. Uh, now we've got we've had a few questions on uh, visas, but we do have a visa session this afternoon. So if we look at your at, at the timetable, uh, I'm not sure what time it is. I think about three forty-five. So you can always come back uh, come back for the visa session. So, uh, but 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 we will come back to some visa uh, visa questions. But I've just had a, a question. Uh, Tracy has asked, did you, did you say how much roughly went to budget for a survey? I can't remember if you did or not. Um, I would say if you're with um, um, an expert, probably about 1500 euros, something like that, 2000, maybe it depends. Um, if it's uh, just a, a certain sort of, sort of part of the property, you might be spending 500, something like that, 700 okay. euros, yeah. Right, okay, it's quite a lot, but I so guess you, you will be uh, completely certain about, you know, how safe the property is in that, in that case. Um, well, just just to be, be clear about that, um, you you always get a diagnostic survey on a property when you buy one. I should have mentioned that as part of the um, the compromis de vente process. It's not, but it's not a they're not a structural survey. So when when you buy a house in France, the vendor is obliged to have a series of surveys carried out about things like the quality of the electrics, the quality of the um, gas installation, um, and whether the property has problems with asbestos or uh, dangerous chemicals. And that's a diagnostic survey from the point of view of, does the property meet the current standards of um, safety in, um, and legality in France? Um, but it's not as, well, when you talk about surveys, I'm more thinking of a structural survey. If you're worried about a crack or you think a wall's going to fall down, that, that wouldn't be covered by um, the diagnostics, which a, a vendor is obliged to carry out. And they probably cost about 500 euros for the vendor when they're selling, and you get a whole pack of that information uh, before you buy, uh, before you sign the initial contract. You wouldn't even sign an initial contract without having seen that. Um, there's the other issue might be FOSS reports, so the, a lot of rural properties are on a septic tank system, um, and again that is um, inspected um, as part of the buying process for the property. So you get you do get an awful lot of information, but um, a survey uh, in terms of a full structural survey is is a is a different thing again. Okay, sure, uh, we've we've had a question. Uh, I'm sure you've you've already asked. Uh, answer this but some people uh, uh, arrived late roughly uh, the, the agent fees just remind us what we should um what one should add for uh, what one should budget for uh well all the prices that you see on the um on the website all include agency fees there isn't Excellent. an additional agency fee um in in there so uh the only fees that you need to be aware of are the notary notary fees the notary fees um and for that you need to budget about eight percent um and that includes uh, government taxes um includes lawyers costs for preparing documents things like that so that's the only additional cost that you need to think about when you're just looking at a property online Okay, terrific. Uh, we have, um, this is an interesting one. We are four individuals buying together. Uh, I know my sister did, did, uh, did this, she bought with, with three friends. So I know it's a, it's a common thing. Is there any equivalent of buying as tenants in common in France or any other advice you can give on, on people buying with extended family? I think it's a lovely thing for uh, grandparents to do, to, to, to buy the holiday home in France that all the family can, can share. Yep. So buying, uh, buying together, any tips and any equivalent of buying as tenants in common? Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. It happens qu not quite a bit, but it does happen. Um, you need to speak to the notaire who will advise you on the best tax efficient way of doing that in France. 
Um, we have various um, options. People buy together as a and create, if you like, a, a almost like a little company, um, which holds the property in um, it, it, as as the asset. Um, people buy um, have a, a system where they buy in common, where you have um, uh, everybody owns a share of that of that property. Um, we have a co ownership. Uh, we have several properties which are sold, which are which are actually co ownership. So we call them co co property. So co props. And um, again, you everybody owns the common ground. Um, and then you own a particular property within that ground, those common grounds, and you have things like meetings and you agree on who's going to pay for various aspects of the property. Um, France has, has lots of different options. I mean, a lot of people own co-ownership in, in France in, in big, big um flat shares as well um, and they do have that process which is working more in rural properties um and again your notaire will be able to advise you on that okay fantastic uh, 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 a lot lots and hundreds dozens and dozens of que uh, questions coming in uh, uh, just to answer a couple of them uh, yes you will be able to access the recordings uh, you just go on the website and uh, and you can look at all the webinars and there's and there's plenty of other ones to do with specific areas of France so do go and have a look at those um, and the uh, yes yeah, so uh, do come back and uh, and look at those if you have to to go or you didn't catch some something I'm uh, just flicking through some of these um, Ah, now, an interesting one. This is touching on uh, on visas. Uh, people who have retired and are maybe on a lower income, what are their chances of being able to retire to France if they've got if they've got an income of roughly sort of fourteen thousand um, pounds? As far as I'm aware, people can retire to to France. I think that there is special provision made for pensioners um, to retire to France. Um, we have a uh, our, our um, marketing department brochure does cover that, uh, talking about what we understand of the post withdrawal agreement. Um, and I think, in fact, the situation in a funny kind of way is improved post Brexit because I think people who retire and this is my reading of it, so I would definitely say get to check out the government websites is that you get access to the French healthcare system straight away. Um, you can yeah. automatically join, whereas before you had to wait six months uh, before you could join. But I think if you come out and retire, you can actually get into the French health system more quickly now than you could before. So um, that's my understanding. Um, but I would um, I, I'm not the I'm not a legal person. I'm a property person. But that's what um, at the moment we're all finding our feet a little bit in understanding what all the new rules and regulations mean. Um, but there's plenty of uh, very good um, website information out there and we've we've got lots and lots of links that we can share with you so that you can check on individual circumstances okay we've had a couple of people asking what sort of cost is charged for the translation of legal documents um well you can uh let me think about a, a, a particular case you, you would have a you can have an accredited translator um and there you charge by the word um, and you can find that information out online. Um, we can do verbal translations for you um, just to sort of go through through questions and documents, but they're not accredited translations. Um, and we have a, a standard, uh, we've got standard translations, which we've got for all the legal documents. Um, so we're happy to share th that information with you. Um, but yeah, it is it is something we can arrange for you. And uh, but you, you will pay if it's a credit translation, you will pay by by the word. So you're probably talking about a couple of hundred euros uh, in terms of translation costs. OK, right. So uh, we've almost run out of time, but I just want to, to check. So I've decided I'm going to go on a virtual viewing and uh, I'm going to contact you yep. and I'm going to contact. Um, well, so what do I need to arm my arm? My, myself with to to start that process off. I guess just to bring uh, Trevor in, what do I need to do currency wise if I'm going to go and do a virtual view and I'm going to I'm going to look at some at some properties and I'm going to do you know the first bit of the process. I might even put a deposit down. Mm -hmm. uh, 
what would I need to do from a currency point of view? Register, I suppose. Is that the first thing? Yeah. So, so, so the first thing is is to is to talk to somebody, you know, to talk to one of our currency specialists is about the size of it because, you know, as, as I mentioned um, you know, throughout the presentation, the key key point here is to understand your budgets in both currencies. That's the important thing. You've also got to anticipate what fluctuations may happen over the period of time that you're looking at. Um, you know, often there's a tendency for people to try and max out their budgets because you know we all get a bit excited about these things and we want to try and get the, you know, the the slightly bigger property, the slightly more expensive property. So it's really important that you engage with a currency specialist early on, so that you understand. Once you understand what your domestic budget is, so what your sterling budget is, that then gives you the ability to really get to grips with understanding what your prospective euro budget is. Um, on the deposit side, that's absolutely something that we can help with. So when you're looking to make that deposit. Um, we will make that transfer for you. Um, it's really simple and straightforward. Uh, we'll book the agreed exchange rates, send those funds over, uh, and they should be credited with the uh, uh, with the notary or the vendor, depending on uh, depending on uh, how that property purchase or sale is going to go through uh, within a within a twenty four hour to forty eight hour period. And that, that deposit will uh, will go through a land in the recipient's bank account. But it's important to engage with us early, uh, particularly from that uh, from that budgeted perspective. Great. Okay. Right. Well, thanks very much. We've run out of time. Uh, we're going to take all your questions and we're going to answer them um, uh, through the pages of, pro of, uh, of French Property Guides. So just look up uh, propertyguides.com forward slash France and we'll be putting uh, transcripts of the, of the webinars up so you can uh, get back and uh, get those answers. Or do please head over to the, to the booths and uh, chat with, with Chloe and Trevor and uh, it just falls to me to say good luck with your actually no before that i'm just going to tell you what else we've got on the list for france before i forget so at 12 30 12 30 to 1 we have top tips for the legal requirements for buying in in france uh, 115 to 1 uh, 145 we've got uh, your move to france and your money tax pensions bank accounts and more get all your finance questions answered at 415 to 445 we got what are your visa options for, for france so, so do please come back and get all those questions answered uh, or uh, or go uh, online later and see the recordings of the, of the webinars so thank you very much chloe thank you very much trevor and thank you very much for all those who, who attended bye-bye